time to introduce myself. Here comes someone else. I want to introduce myself and I'm Ann Carmichael. I am a student financial aid consultant with Leela. Um, and I might be distracted as I'm entering people into our room. But my goal is to make sure that each of you has the support you need to complete the FAFSA and then that you have an understanding of the student financial aid process. Now, I'm going to be moving through this information quite quickly because I don't want to keep you here all night. But if you have a question as I'm moving through the presentation, please use the Zoom chat box to ask that question. We'll, we'll discuss everything at the end. Or if you prefer, I'm going to be leaving my contact information and you can um, either call me or send me an email and we'll talk individually. So I think you have a great group, Ms. Angel. Thank you very much for having me this evening. Now, as I'm sure uh, Ms. Angel has already told you, the Louisiana Department of Education asks that the class of 2021 submit the FAFSA as a requirement for graduation. And this just ensures that your money is ready and waiting for you when you do begin college this fall. And because college can be pricey, you want to make sure that you are considering those costs and being prepared to pay for them. And those include your equipment, books, and supplies such as notebooks, um, textbooks, a computer if you need one, your personal expenses. We're still having people join us. Your, your personal expenses, which will include your um, phone bill, your laundry if you're living away from home, the fuel for your car, and any food purchases outside of your meal plan. Room and board, which could include your dorm room if you're staying on campus or an apartment if you're living off campus but away from home, which might then include your electricity, water, gas, and groceries. And then your tuition and fees. Now, when you are researching your colleges and you go to their websites, they will often list their tuition, but they don't always list their fees and other expenses. So just make sure that you are having a good understanding of exactly how much it's going to cost you to complete your college degree. But the good news is that student financial aid is available to help you pay for all of those expenses. And um, that support is provided by the US Department of Education, the state of Louisiana in the form of the TOPS scholarship, your college or career school, and nonprofit and private organizations such as Leela. You have a good group this evening. Now, every year, the federal government provides more than $120 billion in student financial aid. And that includes the federal Pell Grant, the federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, the Teacher Educational Assistance for College and Higher Education Grant, the Iraq and Afghanistan Service Grant, federal work study, and direct subsidized, unsubsidized, and plus loans. Now, federal student aid grants are a form of financial aid that does not have to be repaid. So you always want to accept any grant offers you receive from your colleges. And those include the Pell Grant, which is for undergraduates with financial need. FSEOGs are also for undergraduates with exceptional financial need. Service grants for students of military parents who died defending the country following 9-11. And then teach grants for students pursuing a teaching career. Now, if you met all of the, the criteria for each of these grants, you could receive all of this grant money and you'll find out by completing the FAFSA. Now, Federal Work Study is a program that provides part-time jobs to help pay for your education expenses. So by selecting 
Yes, I'm interested in federal work study while you're in your FAFSA. The financial aid office will begin to identify jobs that they uh, that you might be qualified um, for. And the monies you earn in a federal work study job can be used to pay for your college expenses. Now, federal work study jobs look great on your first professional resume. So be sure you're considering this program as well. Now, nobody wants to have to take out student loans, but if you need them to complete your college career, they are a good investment. But there is a difference between um, the loans that you might be offered. The direct subsidized loans are based on financial need and no interest is charged on these loans until you graduate or cease to attend. On the other hand, if you're offered an unsubsidized loan, the interest on that loan begins to accrue once it's fully dispersed, which is usually every spring. So you can see that there is a big difference between unsubsidized and subsidized loans. So when you receive your financial aid offers, always accept the subsidized loan per portion first. And you can remember this by saying that the U in unsubsidized means that you always pay the interest. Now, if you are offered loans and you need them to complete your academic year, always accept the federal student loans first because payments aren't due on this type of loan until you graduate or cease to attend. The interest rate is fixed at a lower rate and no credit check is required. This type of loan is in the student's name only. Whereas if you're offered private loans, you need to be a bit more cautious because most of these loans are going to require that payment be made while you're still in school. The interest rate is gonna be higher and they almost always require a co-signer, which means that you're gonna to have to go to a parent or another adult and ask them to be part of your loan. And they're gonna be re um, responsible for repaying it if you do not. So to dispel the myth, almost everyone is eligible for some type of federal student aid and all federal student aid and most institutional and private aid is contingent upon completion of the FAFSA. Now it launched on October 1st and it does so every year. Remember that you must submit a FAFSA every year you're going to be in college. And student financial aid is awarded on a first come first served basis. So you wanna get your FAFSA submitted as soon as possible because we've already been told that over 1 million FAFSAs have been submitted for next academic year. You'll want to get to the head of the line while the money's still available so that you'll be offered the maximum award that you're eligible to receive. You also wanna pay close attention to your deadlines. Each of your colleges is going to have a priority financial aid deadline. The state of Louisiana has a, has a deadline in the form of the TOPS scholarship. And yes, the FAFSA can be used as your application for federal for uh, the TOPS scholarship. So make sure you're meeting their deadline. Federal student aid has a deadline and your counselor might have a deadline uh, that she would like for you to meet as well to meet that graduation requirement. So check with her. Now you wanna begin the FAFSA process by gathering all of the documents you're going to need to complete the form. Because if you do, it shouldn't take you longer than 30 minutes to complete. And those documents are going to include the student and parents' social security cards, the student and parents' 2019 federal income tax returns if you filed one, your W-2s because there's information on this form that might not be printed on your tax return, and then bank statements and records of investments because you're gonna be asked to provide the balances of these accounts as of the date you submit your FAFSA. Now you're gonna to wanna to get started by completing the federal 
creating the Federal Student Aid ID or the FSA ID, because this is going to allow you, the student and your parents, to identify themselves electronically when you access your FAFSA. It's going to consist of a username and a password that you will create yourself and you want to use only your personal information. So each student and one of his parents should create an ID at fsaid.ed.gov. I'm going to go ahead and mute somebody here. Okay, so remember to use only your personal information. Students, if you have not already created a personal email account, you want to go ahead and do that. You don't want to complete your federal student aid documents with your school high school email because once you graduate and that email address is disabled student aid will have no way of getting in touch with you now remember that your fsa id is your electric your official electronic signature and it's legally binding so make sure you're recording it because you're going to use it every year that you're in college and keeping it in a safe place. Don't share information on your FAFs, on your FSA ID. Don't use mom or dad's mobile phone number or email address. Each um, applicant should be using their own personal information. If there is shared information, say a student uses mom or dad's mobile phone as their alternate number, they're going to have trouble signing the FAFSA. Now, if you're ready to get started on your FAFSA, but you don't have access to a computer, you can always download the FAFSA mobile app and it's called My Student Aid and it's really easy to use to submit your FAFSA on your mobile phone or any other mobile device that has internet access. Or if you prefer, you can use the web-based version at fafsa.gov. Now, say the student likes to use the apps and they want to start their FAFSA on the mobile app, but mom and dad prefer to use the web-based the um, uh, web -based version. That's fine. You can each begin on your own platform and when it's time to sign and submit, everything will be integrated into one FAFSA. You're going to want to begin the FAFSA by logging in with the student's FSA ID because the FAFSA is the student's application for federal student aid. Now the parent ID is going to come into play later when you are asked to transfer your information, your tax information from the IRS and drop it into the FAFSA and then again to sign the student's FAFSA. Now the high school class of 2021 should be completing the 2021 2022 FAFSA, because that is the academic year that you are applying for financial aid. You're going to see two options. If now the 2020 2021 FAFSA is for students who are in college this academic year. So don't get confused there. Now, once you are in the FAFSA, you're going to see that there are eight sections that need to be completed. And those include the student demographics, where the student will be asked to report the social security number, name, date of birth, personal email address, home address, residency status, and gender. The school selection section, where the student will report the name of his high school, any colleges that he would like his FAFSA data to be sent to, and his housing plans on each of those campuses. Let's see where it's at. Um, then the dependency status section where the student will be asked to consider a list of 10 questions that are going to determine his dependency status. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in the next minute or so. You'll be asked the number of dependents living in the student's household and the parent's education. And often parents want to know why they're being asked what their level of education is. And it's a good question. And the reason 
you're being asked is that there could be additional grant monies, which are the free monies available for first generation college students. Next, you're going to move to the parent demographic section where parents will report their social security numbers, their marital status and email addresses. And then it's time to move to parent and student financials, where you'll both be asked to report your working wages from 2019, any federal benefits that you receive, and your savings and investment balances. And then it's time to sign and submit the form. Once you do, you'll receive a confirmation that you've done so. But as you're moving through the FAFSA, if you need clarification, please look over to the right hand side and you'll see a question mark and there's one beside each question. Click on that to get a more detailed description. You can select the hyperlinks that are provided. You can request a FAFSA online chat, call Federal Student Aid, or call me at Leela's FAFSA Helpline. Now for this session, I'm only going to cover the most commonly asked FAFSA questions. But if um, you do have a question about something I don't cover, please drop it in the Zoom chat box and we'll go over it at the end of the presentation. Students must be citizens, or eligible non-citizens to complete a FAFSA. But if their parents are neither, they can still submit a FAFSA, they will enter zeros where their so parent social security numbers are asked for. Young men between the ages of 18 and 26 must be registered with Selective Service to receive federal student aid or any federal benefits. If you haven't already registered with Selective Service, you have the option to do so within the FAFSA if you choose. Um, even if you're not 18 yet, you can um, let them know that you're interested in being registered and you will be as of the date you turn 18. It's important to remember that only the colleges you list on your FAFSA in that school selection section are going to consider you for student financial aid. So add all of the schools that you're considering and you can add up to 10 at a time. Um, now, if you're applying to more than 10 colleges, well, good for you. There are instructions in this section on how to do that. Now, remember that even if you haven't completed your admissions applications at those colleges, go ahead and list them on your FAFSA. They'll hold on to your FAFSA data until you finish up your admissions application. And then at that time, most will begin to um, work on your financial aid offers. Now here we are at the dependency status um, questions. And remember, these questions are being asked of the student. And the purpose is to determine whether for FAFSA purposes, the student is dependent on his parents or independent of them. Will you be 24 or older by January 1st of the year you are applying for financial aid? Are you married or separated but not divorced? Will you be working on a graduate degree? Do you have children who receive more than half of their support from you? Do you have dependents other than children or a spouse who live with you and receive more than half of their support from you? Are you currently serving on active duty in the US Armed Forces? For purposes other than training, and I'm gonna stress that because boot camp and basic training are considered training. So if you're in that situation, you will still be considered a dependent student for FAFSA purposes. Now, are you a veteran of the US Armed Forces? At any time since you turned 13, were both of your parents deceased? Were you in foster care? Or were you a ward or a dependent of the court? Are you an emancipated minor? Or are you in legal guardianship as determined by a court? And it's important to note that legal custody 
is not always considered legal guardianship. So make sure you have your documentation with you before you answer that question. And if you have questions about these situations, please feel free to call me or contact federal student aid directly. And then the last question, are you in an, un an unaccompanied youth who is homeless or are you self-supporting and at risk of being homeless? Now, if you can answer yes to just one of these questions and provide a legal document supporting your claim, you're considered an independent student for FAFSA purposes, and you will not be required to provide parental information. Even if you live on your own and you file your own taxes, if you cannot answer yes to one of the prior 10 questions, you um, are considered a dependent student and must provide parental information if you want to be considered for federal grants. And the number one question that we're asked, which parents do I report on my FAFSA? So the rule of thumb is that the parent or parents that you've lived with the longest in the past 12 months should be listed on your FAFSA. So if you live with both of your biological parents, then that's easy, just list both of them. But if the parent that you lived with the longest, um, the past 12 months is either separated, divorced, or was never married, you should list only that biological parent on your FAFSA, unless that parent is now remarried, then you must include his or her spouse. In other words, federal student aid wants to know the financial standing of the household that the student has lived in the longest in the 12 months prior to the date that the FAFSA was submitted. Now, if you're identified as a dependent student, but your parents refuse to provide their information on your FAFSA, you can submit a FAFSA by stating, I'm unable to provide information about my parents. However, you must contact the financial aid office once you submit your FAFSA to discuss your situation with them. Because if you don't, they're only going to consider you for student loans. And we want to make sure everybody is being considered for that free money. So don't be shy. Go ahead and give them a call. They're there to help you and they can help you work through that situation. Now, if you filed a tax return in 2019, I'm going to encourage you to use the Internal Revenue Services data retrieval tool to grab your tax information and drop it right into your FAFSA. It's quicker, it's more accurate, and it's going to reduce the chances of the student being selected for verification. And what is verification in this instance? It's where the parent or students have to go to the IRS, request a tax transcript, and send it to each of the colleges listed on your FAFSA. And that's if you don't use this data retrieval tool. So please consider using it. And if you have any trouble linking to the IRS, just give us a call. We're happy to help you through it. Now, once you do link, you'll be put directly into the IRS website. Grab your 2019 income tax return because you're going to want to duplicate everything printed on that return in, every, in each of these fields within the IRS site. The IRS wants to make sure that the person who is in their site is the person who filed that return. So if your tax preparer misspelled your name on your return, misspell it on this site. If you've moved since 2019's filing, use the address listed on your tax return. And then you're almost finished with your FAFSA. But before you sign and submit, please review your student aid report, which is just a list of all the questions you were asked and your answers to each of those questions. This is your opportunity to go back and make corrections so that the financial aid office can quickly process your student aid. Then it's time to sign. 
And you can see that the student must provide his signature electronically by using the FSA ID and one parent will use their ID to sign as well. And once you submit, you will automatically receive a pop-up confirmation page. It's important to go ahead and print this page or make a screenshot of this page because although the student will receive an email from federal student aid saying that they've submitted, this is the only time you're going to get this much detail. And that's going to include the date and time and confirmation number that you submitted your FAFSA. We've had students call us and say, LSU says they didn't get my FAFSA. And I can tell them, go to your confirmation page and give them that number. You see that there's a data release number in case you want them to make corrections for you. They can do so if you provide them with that number. You'll see instructions on what you need to do next to finish this process. You'll see a list of the colleges that are going to receive your data and also your financial aid estimates. And I'm stressing the word estimate because that's what it is. This is not your fin final offer. Everybody gets excited about these offers and it is exciting. But remember that this information is just a suggestion that's sent over to each of your colleges and the college itself will determine your aid and they will make your offer. Now, if you begin a FAFSA without completing it and you save it for later, you do have 45 days to complete. If you don't complete and submit on that 46th day, you might be surprised when you log back in and all of your FAFSA information has been wiped out and you start from the beginning. So make sure you're finishing up timely. Now, what if you submit your FAFSA, but you want to add a school or you want to change your contact information, or maybe your college has said, hey, we want you need to go in and make this correction. There are several ways to do that, but the quickest way is to go back to FAFSA.gov, log in as the student, make your changes, but remember to sign and submit again. Now, once your FAFSA is fully processed, at that time it's shared with the colleges where they are waiting to identify any aid that they might be um, able to offer you. But if your family's financial situation has changed since 2019, and we're going to see a lot of that around the country, but especially in Louisiana, uh, with all of the hurricanes and storms that have torn through our state, Contact the financial aid office and let them know about your situation. Maybe you've lost a job. Maybe you and your husband have both lost jobs. Maybe there have been some unexpected medical expenses that you've incurred since 2019. Don't be shy about it. Contact the financial aid office. They are more than um, happy to help you. And they might be able to identify some free money that will help you finish out your academic year because they're trying to identify your net price, which is how much you're responsible for paying for your education. Now they're gonna take the cost of, their, of attendance on their campus for that academic year, and they're going to um, subtract out any monies that you might be eligible to receive. And that will equal your net price which you will either pay for out of pocket or you will um, accept student loans to help pay the balance. Now remember, each of your colleges is going to provide you with a financial aid offer. They're going to list their cost of attendance and then they will line item every grant, every scholarship, work study, student loan that they can offer you to go to their school. So make sure you're reading over each of your offers carefully and responding to any requests they might make of you so that they can quickly process your student aid. Once you do make your decision on where you're going to college, you want to accept your financial aid in this order. 
scholarships and grants because this is gift aid that does not have to be repaid. Then federal work study because you've already earned this money and you don't have to pay it back. And then lastly are the loans because this is borrowed money that you must repay and with interest. Now I know this is a lot of information to absorb. So um, again this year, Leela has published our FAFSA completion guide for the class of 2021. And it's free for all Louisiana high school seniors. So if you haven't already received your copy, I'm gonna leave my email address for you at the end of the presentation so that you can contact me directly and I can send it over to you. And I'll also include our senior checklist to help you stay on track this year. Now, I wouldn't wanna finish up the presentation without just quickly touching on scholarships. And I know Ms. Angel has told, told you about many scholarship opportunities that she's heard about. And there are thousands of them. They are, they are offered by the colleges that you're applying to, by your parents' employers, by nonprofits, community organizations, social groups. Some are based on your academic achievement or a special talent that you might have, and others are based on financial need. A scholarship could cover the entire cost of your tuition, or it could be a one-time award, but either way, applying for and winning these scholarships is going to reduce the cost of your education, which bottom line reduces your student loan debt. So be sure you're looking for those scholarships and talking to Ms. Angel about them. Contact your college financial aid office and your admissions representatives at the colleges you're considering. They see a lot of scholarships come across their desks. This year, Leela offers a $1,000 FAFSA completion scholarship for seniors that are attending a Louisiana high school. And once you're in college, you can apply for our Choose Louisiana scholarship, which is a $1,000 award and it's for students attending a college in Louisiana because we wanna keep you here. You can visit leela.org for the details and the applications for both of these scholarships. Now for students who are going to pricier colleges who need additional money after they've already accepted all their scholarships, grants, and state and federal dollars, Lula does administer a nonprofit education loan program. And you can find out about that at leelachoice.org. So now is the time that I'm going to check the chat box and see what kind of questions you have and uh, provide some answers to you. But before I do that, I want to give you my contact information. This is Leela's FAFSA helpline. And when you call, you'll probably be speaking directly to me. So jot this down and also make note of my email address if you want to talk to me individually after our presentation. I also want you to know that a copy of the presentation is going to be posted on our YouTube channel. It's going to be just for your school and it's um, our channel is called Ask Leela and I'm also going to be sending the link over to your counselor to provide to those who couldn't attend tonight. So just a minute and I'll check the chat box. Oh, and I see from Ms. Angel that uh, Boshan is going to have a deadline to submit the FAFSA and that's going to be January 31st of 2021. So you'll want to get started as quickly as possible and be sure that you're calling me if you have any questions. You have plenty of support, so you should be able to do that when you get about 30 minutes to sit down with it. She's also telling me that she needs that confirmation email. Remember that I mentioned once you press submit, you're going to be receiving an email that says, congratulations, you've successfully submitted your FAFSA. Please forward that email to Ms. Angel or print a copy and hand deliver it to her. 
She only wants that confirmation email. She does not want you to turn anything in that has your personal information. Like the page I mentioned that you should print or take a, a snapshot of, that has a lot of your personal info. She's not interested in that. She just wants the email from Federal Student Aid. Does anyone else have a question? You can unmute yourselves and ask, or you can drop it in the chat box. Has anybody already completed their FAFSA? Has anybody applied for scholarships and won anything yet? This is an exciting time. Oh, here's something. Here's a question. Will the email go to only students or parents also? And that's a great question because when my student, my children were in college and completing their FAFSAs, I could put my email address in that parent in that student section, and then the email would go to me. But mom, the email now goes directly to the student's email address. So have a conversation with your child um, and ask them to share that info with you once they receive it. And remind and them to be checking their emails. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Carmichael, can I say one more thing? Um, I want to stress that you must use a personal email. Do not use your school email because y'all will be calling me asking me why you can't get into your email next year when you're no longer a student at Beauchene. I can't help you. So make sure if you do not have one, you can create your own Gmail, your own Google account. You can create a Yahoo one. There's plenty of free emails. So make sure you're using a personal email, not a school one. Absolutely. Does anybody else want to share anything? All right, then I'm going to say thank you again for having me. I'm here to support you. You have my contact info. I know Ms. Angel is there to help you as well. So please um, feel free to contact us. Thanks again, Ms. Carmichael. This was a great presentation. Very, very, very thorough. You're very welcome. Good night.